Hey everyone, good to see you. Today we're going to be taking a look at editing raw images in Capture One using this controller, the LoopDeck CT. At the time of this video, the LoopDeck CT is not new. It's been around for a couple of years now. You've probably watched other videos about it or seen other people using it, or perhaps you own one yourself. But what is new is the integration with Capture One. LoopDeck completely revamped their Capture One integration, which is now included in version 5 of their control panel software that you can download now for both Mac and Windows. So if you are a Capture One user and you're interested to see how the LoopDeck CT works with Capture One, well, we're going to jump over there, we're going to plug in the LoopDeck, we're going to fire up the software and take a look at all the different controls and customization options that are available to you. Full disclosure before we get started, LoopDeck did provide me with a LoopDeck CT to create this video. However, they have not had any editorial input. They have not paid for this video. They have not sponsored this video. They just simply reach out to me because I am a Capture One user who has created videos about Capture One before here on YouTube. And they asked if I'd be interested. And it sounded like a pretty cool topic for a video because I assume there may be some of you out there who are interested to see how this works as well. So without further ado, let's jump over there fire up the loop deck and edit some images. Okay, so over here to the left of my keyboard, I have the loop deck CT plugged in. I can tell you as someone who used version four of this software, that version five is a big improvement. They completely, over, they just completely redesigned the entire user interface. It looks a lot nicer now. I think it's much clearer and easier to understand than it was before. Here in the center of the main window, we have a like an actual size loop deck that looks exactly like the one uh, sitting on your desk. And you can click on the different uh, workspace buttons here, these buttons down here, the dials up here. And this is how you're able to customize and control all the different, uh, all the different inputs that are available on the controller. The main thing we want to look at is the profile window or the profile dropdown up here at the top. If we click on it and open it, the default profile is Mac OS. And this is just like what you would use if you were using the Finder. But then we have application profiles. And when dynamic mode is turned on here, which I would recommend doing, then the Loop Deck software automatically changes the profiles and the, the buttons and actions that are assigned to the Loop Deck controller based on which application is your frontmost application, the one that is active, the one that you are currently using. And out of the box, you can see that there are a number of default ones here for Ableton, After Effects, uh, Adobe Audition, Capture One, which we're going to be getting into. Now you are by no means limited to these particular applications. There are others that you can download by clicking on Find More App Profiles, or you can uh, assign your own application, something that you currently have installed uh, locally on your system, and then create your own profile for it if that's what you'd like to do. Okay, so here is a basic overview of how the LoopDeck CT interface works. So you see this horizontal row of round buttons here? These are workspaces. And the workspaces control which buttons are displayed on the touch screen up here. And they also control the functions that are assigned to the dials on the left and the right side of the loop deck. Right now, I have a workspace one selected, which is indicated by the, uh, the thicker uh, green line around it. And this workspace is mainly used when you are filtering, sorting, rating your content. But then let's jump over to workspace number two, which is what's called basic adjustments. And this is the one that would be used when you are editing your raw images. And then over here on the left and the right, you will see these black uh, strips, these columns here. And these are displayed also on the touch screen over here on the Loop Deck CT. And these show you what function is currently assigned to the dial uh, directly to the left if you're looking at the left side, or the dial directly to the right if you're looking at the right. So these aren't buttons per se, but they are labels for the, uh, for the dial so you know what they do. Now you will notice these little ones and twos here that are uh, underneath the, the touch screen and to the right of the touch screen. These are pages within the workspace. So if I wanted an additional page within uh, the basic adjustments workspace, I could click on number two and then I could swipe back and forth uh, just like I'm doing right now uh, between page one and page two. And then I could come in here and assign whatever I want to to a particular button in that page. So you are by no means limited to what is, you know, what is out of the box default uh, assigned to an application. You can set it up however you want. 
Now this is one and two over here. This is ex this is also the same. These are pages for the dials on the left and right. So as you can see, they update and change depending on uh, which one I click on. And if I want to create a new page, I can uh, come over here to add new page and add a new page for the dials and I can add a new page for the buttons as well. All right, so now number three, if we click on that, these are additional uh, image editing controls. There's things like, you know, picking your white balance that does the eyedropper, uh, the levels um, uh, panel. There is uh, all kinds of controls here for uh, split toning, converting to black and white, uh, turning on exposure warnings. As you can see, whenever I click on one of these, the window over here on the far right updates. And what it's showing me over here are all the different functions that Capture One provides. So if you're looking for something in particular, you don't have to look for, you don't have to look up its keyboard shortcut or something. Like if you wanted to, you know, change temperature to something else, you could just come in here, uh, look up, like let's say you wanted to change it to brightness. Well, you can just go into exposure, you can find brightness and to drag this over and drop it on top of there. And then the action assigned to that dial would change. So it's all drag and drop. You don't have to figure out what the keyboard shortcuts or anything like that. It's all uh, built into the Loop Deck software. And then down here at the very end, we have workspace number eight. Now, this is the export workspace, and this has all the different tools and functions for exporting your image. And I think what Loop Deck did here was they put this one down at the very end of the row, thinking this is like the end of your image editing workflow after sorting and rating your images and then editing them then exporting should be down here at the very end, which leaves number uh, workspace number five, six, and seven empty. There's nothing assigned to these. As a matter of fact, like six just has a, a keyboard space uh, function assigned to it. But you can change these however you want. You can come in here and create additional workspaces. You can edit the existing ones however you want to do it. And one point that I want to also make is that if you do create your own workspaces, you can come in here to uh, whichever profile you're currently editing. You can uh, click on the ellipsis over here. You can export the profile if you want to back it up. And you can also uh, come up here and add a profile. So you can add an empty profile or add a default profile. And add default profile, what that does is, let's say that you uh, made a bunch of edits to the, to the baseline standard profile and you want to roll it back and you no longer want it. Well, you can come up here and go to add default profile name this like capture one default, something like that. Click OK. And now it has loaded the capture one default uh, configuration and profile that comes with the Loop Deck software. And, uh, and so I can effectively start over from there, or I can switch back to the one I was using before. So in general, what this allows you to do is you can set up actually multiple profiles per application. So not only can you have a default to roll back to, but you can set up multiple custom ones if you just want multiple profiles per application for some reason, like maybe there's more than one person using the Loop Deck. That's certainly something that is available to you. Now, before we move on to Capture One, there's one quick uh, and kind of fun thing that I want to show you about the Loop Deck software, and that is the touch screen up here. And you see all the text that is underneath each button and down the side here. Now, that would appear to be just just regular text that is being created by the Loop Deck software. But that is actually not what those are. They are actually icons. So if you click on a button here or a touchscreen button and then come down here to the lower right-hand corner in the Loop Deck software, click on icon. Well, here is the graphical icon. These are actually ping files that are loaded uh, with this profile. So if you really wanted to, if you were, uh, if you had some, uh, some design skill or whatever, and you just wanted to make your own icons and design that screen up there, however you want it to be, well, you create your own pings, uh, your own ping file, load them in and uh, save them. And then they will display up here on the touch screen. One quick configuration change that I would recommend making is to come up here to the cog wheel, which is where the settings for the Loop Deck are. Click on Overlay over here in the left column, and then you will see this Overlay Enabled switch here. Now, by default, it's turned off, and it's going to look like that. 
but I would recommend turning this on because I think the overlay is actually really useful. And if I come up here and turn this uh, dial at the top left of the CT, which is the temperature dial, you see this readout down here? And it's just a nice visual confirmation, I think, that something is actually happening. And I like the fact that it's getting a uh, some numerical feedback here as well that you can see in the overlay. And actually, rather interestingly, you can actually see it on the LoopDeck CT screen as well. Um, it's actually updating the interface there too, which is not exactly, not totally necessary, but I mean, pretty cool. I mean, I think that's kind of nice that it has that, that type of feedback. Okay, so obviously I'm in workspace number two right now, which is the image editing workspace. And I'm just turning this dial up here at the top left of the loop deck back and forth. And I am now adjusting the color temperature of the image. Now, if you have any experience with loop deck before with the loop deck version four software and capture one well you may already notice a difference in speed because before they were using keyboard shortcuts to communicate with capture one but now the loop deck software is using an apple script api for more direct uh, communication which makes the user interface more responsive and it, it's practically immediate when you turn one of these dials and it's much, much better and feels a lot nicer than it did before. So top left dial is uh, temperature. Then I have tint here and I could be, you know, adjusting the tint back and forth. I could then raise and lower uh, the image exposure as well. Up here at the top right, we have clarity and that, uh, that adjusts some of the contrast, some of the micro contrast in the midtones. We have structure, which helps bring out some of the some of the details, actually a little more <laughs> structure in here looks nice compared to what I had before, I think. Uh, then we have dehaze and dehaze is one of the newer tools in Capture One. I think, I believe this was added in 21, Capture One 21 that came out a year ago. And uh, then in the center here, we have all the different uh, options that are available. I can copy the adjustments that are being made that I've made to this image and then uh, jump over to the browser interface, click on a different image, tap on the paste icon, and then I apply the edits from the other image to this one. Now, this one is obviously has been underexposed. This was part of a bracketed exposure. That's why it's uh, the settings aren't quite working right, but actually it doesn't look too bad. Um, <laughs> I kind of like it, kind of like it dark. Let me flip over to workspace number three, levels. So levels are the uh, this rather unique interface to capture one, which is down here in the lower right. Let me scroll this up a little bit. And here is where we're able to uh, adjust the levels and the midtones and the highlights. We also have the shadow levels here, which we can bring up and down, uh, levels just for the midtones too. And this is the kind of thing that I think just takes practice and time. Like the longer you use the loop deck and you remember where all the different dials are, what's assigned to what and where they are, the faster your workflow will end up being. Now you'll notice down here at the bottom of the touch screen on the loop deck, these color wheels. So these are the uh, color grading tools, otherwise known as the color balance tools in Capture One. We have shadow grading, midtone grading, highlight grading, and global grading. Let me just click on global grading. Actually, I already had it selected. That changes the interface of the wheel here. So this is actually a touch screen on this wheel. So we have uh, saturation up here at the top. And then if we tap the bottom of the wheel, then it changes to hue. So if you wanted to apply a color uniformly across all the different brightness values in your image from blacks to whites all the way, and then you're able to select a specific hue by switching to that and then turning the dial and the interface in Capture One updates as you do that. Now let's check out uh, shadow grading, mid-tone grading, highlight grading. And this is where stuff starts to get a little more nuanced. And you can see that the touchscreen interface here on the wheel updates. It looks like they need to do a little, a little work on the, uh, on the line height of uh, some of the text here because it's, it's a little jumbled, at least at the time of this video in the version that I'm using. So we have shadow grading. And then when you get into here, you have color balance, uh, uh, shadow saturation, and you swipe up on the wheel and then you get shadow hue and then you get shadow light. And this controls again, just like the master wheel, we're able to control saturation, swipe up, and then we're able to change the hue. Actually, let me just put some blues into the shadows because that's probably what's most appropriate for this image. Give it a little more saturation. We're cooling down the shadows. And then I can go down to light 
And then this uh, controls, this is kind of like an additional exposure control that you have access to. Now you'll notice on the loop deck wheel here, there are some, uh, some functions that are available. There's uh, some layering options. There's some masking options. And let me just quickly demonstrate how that works. So I could tap on new empty layer and that will create a new layer in the, a new adjustment layer in the layers palette. Then I could click on, let's just do a radial gradient mask and that selects that tool. I could then drag uh, the mask over the image. Let's just say I wanted to add some light here. And then I just turn the, the same exposure dial here on the, uh, on the loop deck in order to add some light into the center of the image. Now, one thing you will notice when you are configuring and using the Loop Deck CT for use with Capture One is that there are certain tools and panels which cannot be assigned to the Loop Deck, certain things which, um, which are just not available. And in some cases, it's obvious why. I mean, some things like the Tone Curve panel, I mean, like Tone Curve is such a unique interface and it's really not the kind of thing that could be replicated using a, a, an external controller. You really have to use a mouse and the interface in order to to use it. But then there are some kind of interesting oversights here, and maybe this will change in the future. Maybe this will change by the time you see this video. But as far as I can tell, the color editor panel here is not currently available uh, to the Loop Deck. The Loop Deck does not have actions for this. And I don't know, maybe it's an API thing. Another place where I think there is some room for improvement is that there remains some tools and functions in here that appear to be using the older keyboard shortcuts interface with Capture One. Let me show you an example like this, draw mask and adjustments function here. If we go into here, then we get our, our brush tools. We have flow up here, the layer opacity. We have the brush size, brush opacity, brush hardness. And watch what happens when like I, uh, I twist this knob all the way down to the left. And you can see that the size is still adjusting on screen. If I quickly turn it to the right, <laughs> then it takes a little while uh, to get to the intended brush size. So it appears to be, you know, it's, it's not particularly fluid, if you know what I mean. Like when I twist this back and forth, it's rather slow. There's a lag between the adjustment that I'm making on the dial and what's happening on screen. So yeah, hopefully like Loop Deck and Capture One could get together and figure this out because it would be nice for, you know, tools like brush size here to be more fluid and to move as smoothly as you know, some of the other tools do like, you know, temperature and tint, all the main basic adjustments here. Cause these are all, these all work great and they're very smooth and intuitive and they respond instantly when you, you know, adjust them. But there are certain ones like brush size, which I don't know, they just seem to need a little more work. Okay, so I hope that overview was helpful. For me in general, the past couple of months, the user experience of the Loop Deck CT has been really interesting because I've been using this not only with Capture One, but I've been using it with Photoshop and Adobe Premiere Pro. I've actually been using it with the Mac OS Finder as well. And what's become just really clear to me about this product, about the Loop Deck CT, is that this is the kind of thing that you will get more value out of the longer you use it, the more time and energy you dedicate to it, the more time you spend developing the the requisite muscle memory to know where all the dials are, where all the buttons are, so that you don't have to look down in order to figure out uh, what you're doing or to find the action that you're looking for. And it's also the kind of thing that gets better through customization. If you uh, spend some time setting it up the way that you want it to be so that everything is comfortable and you know exactly where everything is, but it is a complex product. And it seems like the kind of thing that just as I think I've uh, wrapped my head around it and I understand everything that's going on with the Loop Deck, I learned something new about it. So for the purposes of this video, I wanted to share with you uh, an overview of using the Loop Deck CT and Capture One so you see how they work together. But as far as my own opinion of the Loop Deck CT, I feel like I actually need to spend more time with this. I need to uh, work with it more in order to better wrap my head around everything that's going on with it before uh, providing a final opinion about it. So if you would like to see that video in the future, and if you haven't done so already, please take a moment and subscribe to this channel down below. And if you learned something from this video, if you got something out of it, please take a moment and also give it a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, if you have a Loop Deck CT, if you own one as well, and you have tried it with Capture One or you use it with other applications and you have some feedback and thoughts that you would care to share, please feel free to use the comment section below in order to do that. 
and uh, I would appreciate it. And I bet a lot of other people watching this video would as well. You can also direct message me over at Instagram. Uh, if you don't want to leave a comment down below and you have uh, a question, feel free to reach out to me over there. Thanks so much for being here. I'll see you next time.